look who I ran into at the Halifax Security Forum, uh, Gary Dewar, Canada's ambassador to Washington, and Rob Merrifield, who is uh, the new Alberta government's uh, senior representative in, in Washington, essentially Alberta's guy in Washington. Rob Merrifield, you were a former member of parliament until just recently, and you left parliament to go to, uh, to go to work for Jim Prentice. How come? Well, what I was doing before was working with the legislative arm of the U.S. government. So I was down working with the uh, ambassador and his team uh, about 50% of my time. This allowed me to do it 100% of the time. And uh, what the province is doing is no different than what the federal government does. You can't put a line between our interests between the province and the federal government. So it allows me to uh, uh, just drop the political stuff and really work uh, dovetailing in to do whatever I can for the for the country, the province, uh, and both of our countries, actually. This is something that did not get a lot of attention, at least from me. During your last year as a member of parliament, you, you had a mandate letter from the prime minister okay. to spend as much time as possible in Washington trying to push resource projects through. Keystone. Well, it wasn't just Keystone. Country of origin labeling, uh, beyond, you know, the Buy America clauses that are boiling on, the, the thinning of the border, all of the issues that the ambassador has been working really hard on doing as well, uh, we were able to complement. Uh, my focus in the last few years was really the legislative arm. And so that's, uh, that's where I, uh, I dealt with. I dealt with the private sectors to work in the districts of those uh, congressmen as well. Uh, so does the uh, consulate office across America, together with the embassy. So, really, it was a complementary role to the embassy. So, really, not doing much different now. Only I can do it a little more full time. Ambassador, uh, I had all kinds of questions about Keystone. I'm probably going to ans ask some of them. But you say that that's not the only file that you're dealing with in, in Washington these days. Well, the majority of time we spend is on the two billion dollars worth of trade we have each day, uh, working on beyond the border, trying to take it to the next step. Uh, working together on, uh, I spend most of my time on coordinating our efforts to keep the world safer. Whether when we first got there, the transition in Afghanistan, the mission in Libya, uh, now we're working on ISIL and, uh, and the situation in the Middle East uh, that's very serious, coordinating our uh, response on uh, Putin's invasion of parts of Ukraine. And, and making sure that people understand right around Washington and right around the United States our views, uh, coordinating our position on uh, Israel and the Palestinian question. So we spend a lot of time keeping our neighborhood safer and our world safer, but the media spends most of its time on a pipeline, and uh, that's obviously uh, because it's talked about by the president in Burma and the prime minister in uh, in Brisbane, it's obviously an important issue for Canada. Although our oil is all getting down to the Gulf Coast. Yeah. The debate isn't energy versus the environment. The debate is a pipeline versus crude oil on rail. Let me play to type and ask about Keystone. Yes. Um, in the context of a, of, a, of a kind of a turbulent parliamentary cal or congressional calendar, there were midterm elections. There's a historic wave of Republicans who are coming. There's a lame duck Congress that is still in place until January. And then there's a presidential election on the horizon. How does all of that affect uh, the talks that you have around, around Keystone and around resources? Well, we've, we've got a couple of things going for us. Uh, one is we have the scientists in the State Department predicting three years ago and being right today that if the oil isn't in a pipeline, it'll be on rail. Crude oil on rail has gone up tenfold. And they document, the scientists say, that represents higher emissions, higher safety risk and higher cost. We also have public opinion on our side and we've had votes. The Senate recently was 59-41. Uh, uh, we've had votes in the uh, House repeatedly supporting it. Every governor along the route now supports it. We had a problem in Nebraska three years ago, but it, all of them are now supporting it. We'll see what happens with the court in Nebraska. So moving into 2015, we've got scientists on our side, uh, we have public opinion on our side, and we've got, to make, we've got to make the debate a question of infrastructure. It's not stop the pipeline, save the planet. Uh, the scientists said that it was never that, but we've got to make sure the public of the United States and the voters in the Senate and the House and the presidency understand it's pipeline versus rail. The longer we go, though, the clearer it becomes that Barack Obama is not preoccupied with making sure the process works. It's that he does not like this pro pipeline project. He has delayed it. So we've had a d denial in Nebraska on the route and a delay in Washington. 
We've had a denial in Nebraska on the court authority or the court adjudicated authority to approve it, and we've had a delay. Uh, so yes, denial in Nebraska, delay in uh, Washington. Uh, we want to get a certainty from the court soon uh, in Nebraska. Hopefully it'll be positive and we can get on to the scientist. He did say when he first got elected, he actually signed a memorandum that the government of the United States and the president of the United States would not make decisions based on ideology. He would make it on the basis of science. We're going to see whether that document he signed uh, and proclaimed uh, as president is accurate with uh, the decision he should make based on the scientific advice advice he got. We don't want political science advice. We want uh, scientists that evaluated science this project. Yeah, the real scientists. <laughs> don't tell political science I say that. We want real scientists to determine this thing. Okay. <laughs> Rob Merrifield, I, I think a lot of people are curious how it works when a province has a, has a representative in Washington and of course Canada does. How do you two work together? Where's your office? Well, it's in the embassy. Uh, couple floors or three floors below uh, the ambassadors, but we work hand in glove. Ambassador and I have worked very closely on all these issues and we're just going to continue to do that. So it's it's not that we're in competition anyway, we just complement each other. You, you can't do all this alone. This is uh, very much a team sport. Uh, con congressional uh, powers that are there now from the Senate and the, and the House side, you have, you know, 535 members to deal with and then all of their interests and and it's a it's a massive government largest government in the world and you have to be able to make sure your message gets through and it, it, it percolates to the top of the agenda so you have to get to the decision makers on issue by issue by issue and that's a massive job and I think it's underestimated by uh, the population in Canada for sure uh, just how a large a job that is and uh, I can't say enough about how great the ambassador has been doing on that and even if he wasn't here I would, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, I, uh, the tape will last forever. Yeah, so yeah, they, that's they, right. But you know, we, there, we but. also, you know, Premier Prentice, he and I worked together on light vehicle emission standards, which I think was the best initiative in, in our neighborhood on climate change. Uh, you know, getting better fuel efficiency in our vehicles was the, was the largest source of GHGs in Canada and the United States. So uh, we were working together, uh, Rob and I have worked together before uh, in his former capacity now. We have a great premier on climate and energy uh, and, or the environment and energy in Alberta. And we're also working with other premiers. You know, we were, work, we're working with Quebec to get Hydro Quebec. Uh, it takes five years to get a transmission line approved. This is not just a pipeline, getting renewable, clean, energy from Canada to markets in the United States is uh, no picnic either. Uh, it, it does help as well. Uh, Jim Prentice, John Baird, all of Cabinet is there, myself worked in Cabinet together. There's a trust level and a, and a confidence that we have in each other and the abilities to be able to uh, you know, do the job as effective as we can. Uh, not in crosshairs with anyone, but uh, complimentary all the way through. And this is uh, something that I, I've certainly appreciated uh, being part of the job. And we're now we've just moved down the last couple of weeks, so it's uh, uh, it's a process getting down to Washington. But we're pretty excited about um, uh, really getting our shoulder into it and making some things happen for the country. Very good. On that note, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, Rob Merrifield, Gary Dewar. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.